Hello there, friend and fellow maker. Welcome to the shop. You've got Bill today, and Brittany and I have been playing a lot of Valheim. We're not alone. A lot of people love the game. It is super fun, so exciting, and we've enjoyed every moment of it. Oh, hello there, new friend. <laughs> Yes, so much fun. <laughs> uh, we, we've, we're actually playing through it a second time with a, with a, a friend. Uh, we had just had such a blast. Uh, we've been building crazy houses and boats and all sorts of stuff. And of course, really cool weapons and armor. And we want to make the coolest weapon from the game, which I think is the porcupine giant spiky mace using death mosquito needles that are really, again, fun <laughs> to collect. We're gonna make a giant one. We're gonna do it out of foam. I have a stick already. Let's get started. I've done a little work, starting to figure out the shape and everything and making a rough pattern here. Uh, right now, the only thing I care about is the handle and I found this metal tube uh, that is about the right diameter and almost the right length. I'll have to cut it a little bit shorter. The, uh, the head of the mace is gonna go right there. Uh, so for now, I think what I'll do is cut this, sand it so I can glue stuff to it, and then wrap the whole thing in some two millimeter EVA foam, this thin stuff here, so that we can texture the outside of this really easily. We've got um, what I think is like iron and then wood for the handle. So step one, cut a tube. Uh, 9 out of 10 uh, server technicians recommend storing a server directly under your bandsaw. It's just the best place for it. The dust is actually good for it. <laughs> no, this is, this is trash. We're throwing that away. Ready to go on the uh, haft of our mace there, and then these lumpy bits that go around it. And I'm thinking, got some more foam here to wrap around in those spots, but it needs a taper on it. I can cut that taper on my bandsaw. Got the uh, bandsaw set up here on a little bit of an angle, and I have my fence set up so that I can cut that bevel and feed this whole thing right through. Now I can take that same piece and glue it back together. Glue's all dried. Actually, I can just do this. Yeah. Now, if we glue this and wrap it around this part, we should get what we're looking for. So, you know, I'll tape that on there and then I can uh, draw where I need to put glue on this. It wraps around like so. I will need to cut that a little shorter, that's okay. For now, I just want to mark where the glue is going to go. There we go, now it is the correct length.
For the handle down here, I've got this piece of 10 millimeter thick foam. I'm gonna wrap all the way around it, but I wanna cut this bevel just like we did before on those. Um, and again, I'm gonna go to the bandsaw for that and I think I can use the same setup. I wanna run this through straight up and down like this to get the right cut. The problem is my material, ah, oh, keeps running into the saw, but this is why I love foam. I could hold it nice and uh, sturdy against the fence and then I can just bend it and then run it through very carefully like that. And that's how I'm going to do that. <laughs> Praise foam. This piece will get wrapped around there. Um, to figure out how, how wide this needed to be, the circumference basically, I made us just cut out a strip of 10 millimeter foam and wrapped it around and then made a mark. And that's how I was able to figure out how wide this piece needs to be. It's actually similar to the big um, ripper axe that we made uh, for Foamsmith 2, our second book. Available now at punishprops.com. Glue applied, time to stick this part down. This is the this is the hard part getting the uh, seam all stuck together. Oh boy, I should have. Uh, I'm a little shy on room here or on on uh, material, but I think I can get that to go together. Ugh. You know what? I may have to put a strip of foam or something in there. I just didn't give myself quite enough room. That's all right. Okay, to fix this little goof up here, I made a little wedge, a little triangular piece of foam that'll get glued right in here, and then I'll just sand everything flush. Uh, for the gluing on this, it's going to use super glue, and then this can just slide in there. A little patch, a little, little. Oops! Glue my fingers to it, of course. But yeah, this is a little, little fix up, a little spot fix. This is looking okay. We'll clean this all up later. But first, I need this end cap. And for that, I have a piece of, I believe, 24 millimeter thick foam that'll go on there. Trace out the rough shape before we glue it, too. Uh, and I'm going to just cut that roughly to shape. And when we're doing some dremeling later, we can make it look all pretty and flush. And stick. Nice and stuck too. And now I can clean this up a little bit, a little bit better before we do our final gremeling. It's looking pretty clean, but there are a couple of spots that need some filling. So I've got my quick seal here. I'm just going to spoon a little bit of the good stuff in that crevice to uh, hide our crimes. A little water, a little smoothing, and then we let that dry. There's a couple more spots too I'll go and fill in. You didn't see anything. That looks good for now. We do need to let that dry though, but thank goodness we have some more parts to work on, specifically the head portion. To get the head of the mace started, I have an ace up my sleeve. That's right. I have a pattern already that's vaguely egg shaped. This is the pattern for our Game of Thrones dragon egg. And uh, it's just this one uh, part. You just cut it out six times. I've already done that. I have six pieces of foam here. I'm just going to do a little heat forming before we glue them all together. I'm 
Yeah. That's what we're looking for there. I tend to put things like this together in, in pieces. So I'm going to put the two halves together first. Lining up those registration marks. Oh, that's satisfying. There, that is, uh, that's one half. Let's see how that stacks up on our, our pattern here. It's, boy, that's, that's pretty darn close. It's a little big. I might like chop the bottom of this because I do need a flat spot on the bottom, but that's like <laughs> surprisingly close. We'll see how it looks once it's all put together. I'll do the other half. Two halves that require glue. Both rims are glued and I gotta stick them together, but I don't want them to all stick at the same time. So this piece of paper is going to Keep everything apart until it's time. I'm just getting everything close. I'll be able to press it together better once it's tacked down. We're taking little steps here. Okay, that can come out. We can just sort of Put everything close here. There we go. Oh yeah. Okay, now that I have it lined up, I'll go pinch all those seams nice and tight. Got a football. Come on. I'm liking this. I just need to hack off and make the bottom flat. And to figure that out, I'm just gonna trace this roll of tape. I'm using the registration marks I had on there to kind of center it. Yeah. Now for cutting, I wanna make sure it's nice and perpendicular. So I'm gonna cut straight down. There we go. That'll do, and get rid of this. And then I've got another piece of foam that's gonna be the cap for it. We'll just um, figure out the diameter. Oh, it's about this roll of tape, and I'll just trace that there. Um, I also wanna punch a hole in the middle of this, so I need to figure out the middle. I've managed to kind of find the center. Uh, it'll work well enough for what we need. And then I'm gonna cut this out using a sharpened metal tube that is exactly the same size as our Mace's uh, handle PVC pipe, or, or actually that's a metal pipe too, so this should fit perfectly. Oh, that's good. I'm gonna do this. Boop. And this donut will get glued on there. Just make sure this all lands uh, in the right spot. So far, so good. Okay, it's just a little oversized, which is fine. Gives us more material to work with. I did a little trimming here, just removed the excess with my knife, and the rest of this can be finished on the uh, rotary tool. My eggs all put together. Uh, I did some cleanup work with the rotary tool, but I also went over all the seams with this 400 grit sanding stick to get everything nice and pretty. Uh, next, I need another hole in the top. The shaft is gonna go in there, but I want it to poke out the top so we can glue it there. It'll be nice and strong. Same tube that's all sharpened, and I'm just looking for the center. <laughs> that looks good. <laughs> Ta da! Now, this part should be able to go through the bottom and out the top. It's a little, a little short. 
Um, I can remove a little bit of this foam so it'll slide down a little further. So why don't we do that? That goes there, like a quick mark. And now I can just put a little hot glue on that. Yeah, that's nice. Let's see if I can get rid of that hot glue. It's only on your finger for a second. It doesn't hurt that much. This uh, hole on the top here will be covered by a spike. So I don't have to worry about it looking all janky. That's my excuse anyway, in case it ends up looking all janky. But it looks great. That's on there. And without the spikes, it's a pretty effective mace already, right? Bonk. <laughs> this is gonna be absurd with like 20 inches of spikes <laughs> on it. But uh, that's awesome. It's really light, good to swing around. Feels good. Next is gonna be texturing. We need to add some texture on here. All right. To do the texturing, uh, mostly what I'm worried about here is the parts that are wood. And according to my reference here, this part's wood, this part's wood, this part's wood, the rest is iron. So I'm gonna use my soldering iron here to do some wood grain texture on these parts. These three parts. I'm saying this mostly for my own benefit. These ones, got it. Doing a little heat sealing on the foam. This should tighten up the surface and prepare it for the actual sealing, which is gonna be Mod Podge. There's a lot of cat hair on the end of that. It's just part of the prop now. I like using Mod Podge uh, whenever I'm gonna add texture to the surface. So we've got these wooden, these wood-ish looking grips here, and uh, I'm gonna accentuate the wood grain I, I carved in there with the Mod Podge. So I, First thing I do is I get it covered. I make sure that it's like down in all those little crevices and details so that all the foam is sealed. And then I can go over it to add a little bit of texture. Usually I'll let it dry a touch before I do that. So it's a little bit tacky. And then I'll go in and add some more texture. I did the same thing on the, uh, the Judge Mask and on The Mask from the movie The Mask. Uh, and it turned out awesome. I love, how this is pulling double duty. It's both sealing the foam so that it's protected and it is the surface finish that we want, but also we have this opportunity to add some really great texture. I'm, uh, I've got a layer on there and it's looking pretty good and I could just leave strokes like that, but they're not gonna be perfectly straight wood grain. So I can like kind of just use this crummy chip brush to kind of follow the lines I drew before and add a little bit more Really cool looking texture there. And you can do this in layers too. I'll probably add one or two more layers after this to really seal it well and sell the effect. This part here is meant to look like metal. So instead of doing a stroke texture, I am stippling it. I did the same thing on the doom hammer and it turned out great. So I'm doing it again. Let's see the pommel. Yeah, pommel could use that too. Wood, metal, got it. That should do it at least for this layer. And I have a little stand set up so it can dry. How about that? I am super happy with how this handle is looking, but there's a ton of spikes on this and we need to start making those. We did a little bit of prototyping here to figure out. We, uh, we wanted to figure out both the size, shape, but also the coating. We tried some urethane rubber on this. We'll get to that later. But for now, I have a uh, prototype spike pattern uh, it needs to be a little bit longer. The spikes need to be about that long, and I also need to make a smaller version. So I'm gonna figure that out, and then we'll start cutting out a bunch of these from our foam.
Hmm. Hey, we've got some spikes. We have many, many spikes. We have big ones that are hollow. We made from flat pieces. And then we also made some smaller ones from uh, foam dowels. These were just shaped with the rotary tool. Uh, and now we, we want to start, oh no, it's gone. I got this. Oh no. There. <laughs> We're gonna start coloring and sealing these at the same time, and we, we did some tests. Hold on. We did some tests with Uricote. It's a urethane rubber uh, that we can pigment. Uh, and the reason why we wanna do that is so that there's a nice thick rubber layer on the spike so that it will bounce back, because it's gonna be bonking stuff. We don't want it to, to break or crease or anything, and this stuff is really durable. Uh, so what we're gonna do is brush a couple layers on to do the green and white look on the spikes here. The first one we'll do is the green. We'll put on everything to get the base of those. And then we'll do another white layer on top, hopefully a little bit of a gradient. Also, we have glow powder we're gonna put in there because these uh, spikes kind of glow in the game. It'd be neat if they glue like under a black light. Glue? <laughs> if they glowed under a black light <laughs> or at night. So I'm gonna mix up some Uricote. I'm gonna mix in some pigments glow powder and start brushing all these spikes. I'm gonna dole out the side A here uh, so that I can color it first before we add the side B because that'll kick off the reaction. Uh, and it's a 100 to 10 or 10 to 1. I don't, I don't know why it can't just be 10 to 1. So I'm putting 100 grams in here to start with just to make my math nice and easy. Uh, and then we will add our color. These are pigments. They are opaque compared to tints. So we're gonna start with a little green and a little white to try and get that mint looking color. Oh, okay, that's just, that's just drizzly. Let's add a little white and see how it looks. All right, so these aren't exact amounts. We'll just keep mixing it until it looks nice. Ooh, oh, that's pretty good. Looks delicious. It does. We can also check to see how opaque this is because we may need to add just a little bit more of both to make sure it's gonna cover that foam. Uh, we don't want any of the black foam sneaking through. Um, that looks pretty opaque, and the color actually looks pretty great. I may tinker a little bit, but this is well on its way. Got this glow powder here. I've got a UV light you can see. Ooh, it's so glowy. So we're gonna throw a little bit of that in the mix. Maybe, maybe a little more. Three scoops. Let's do three scoops. Uh, and then we also have, let's close that so we don't spill it everywhere. We also have this pearly green uh, powder. We'll add a little bit of that too so we get a little bit of sparkle. Man, this stuff is so fine. We'll just do one little scoop of that. Cap that before it gets everywhere. Mix that in. Got a little bit of glow in there. You can kind of see all the little particles glowing. Ah, that's probably enough. And we'll put a couple of layers of Uricote on so we should have a couple layers of glow. Now 10 grams of the Part B. Being super careful with this. The container is so cute. Isn't it adorable? Nine? 9.83? Oh, 10.05, that's close enough for me. Okay, clock is ticking now. And that does give it a little bit of a brownish tint, but it still looks pretty good to me. And then I'm gonna spread this out on this plate here. Um, this stuff starts to warm up and then it cures faster. When it's warmer, it's exothermic. So we wanna spread it out so it doesn't get warm right away and cure right in the cup. All right, let's spread it out. Ooh, that looks pretty awesome. It's been a day, we let these cure overnight and they looked awesome and they're super, super durable. The rubber coating, we put, ended up putting three layers on here and it's exactly what I wanted for durability. Really happy with that. 
Um, the Eurico can be a little finicky to work with. It only has an eight minute pot life, so you have to work in small batches pretty quickly. Uh, we ended up doing like five batches and working together, Brittany helped a ton uh, getting everything brushed on in a short period of time. Uh, but we did it, let it cure, and everything looks fantastic. Now we have to make the little collars that go around the base of these and then stick it on the mace head. Did a little prototyping. I think I have this pretty well figured out. I grabbed some 10 millimeter foam and we split it again using the bandsaw on an angle. So I have these tapered pieces. And these are what I can cut these from so that we get this nice tapered angle on the sides. My pattern here, nice and simple. Uh, just gonna trace it out, cut this thing out, and I'll show you how it gets assembled. We end up with a little dip. There are these dips on either side of it. We end up with a dip on our seam, so we just cut one on both sides like that. I think it worked out really nicely. And then this whole thing will get glued on to the bottom of our spike here. Now I'm gonna put barge on the rubber here and barge on here to stick it while I'm attaching it. I'm not counting on that being a good bond because this Eurocoat, nothing likes to stick to it, but that's okay. We'll glue the seams together and that gripping it together will hold it in place. It's not gonna go anywhere. And there will be a little extra sticking out on the bottom there that we can trim off. Everything out a good five minutes to dry, and now we stick it down. Like I said, that part's gonna dip down. That's okay. We just wanna make everything meet up on the other side. Oh, I am happy with that. That is nice. Uh, I am thinking I could have rounded this edge over with the rotary tool before I glued it down. I think I'll do that for the rest of them. And we'll dish this a little bit with a rotary tool to get it to sit on the head of the mace. But that, that looks pretty spectacular. Just have to do this one, two, 17 more times. No, we have all the tiny spikes. A lot more times. <laughs> going great. I'm working on the little spikes over here and Britt, well she's working on the the head trying to figure out where all those giant spikes go. <laughs> oh my goodness this is gonna be so cool. Very Spikes are ready to go, and in fact, Brittany went and mapped out all the spots for the large spikes, and we're gonna attach those first. Just like everything else, gonna use some contact cement on both the mace and the spikes. Start sticking them on. Got our contact cement applied, and now it's time to do this for real. Really push that on there. <laughs> all right. One spike down, 19 to go. This, this part is so satisfying after all that work. <laughs> all I have to do is just stick them on. This feels like a, a kit, a toy kit I can just put together. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. This is getting unwieldy. Can you believe, Britt, that there are 16 more spikes to put on this? <laughs> Oh my goodness. This this is this is perfect. This is so good. <laughs> Look at how big it is compared to my head. <sighs> Can I even set it down? Oh yeah, it's fine. <laughs> I mean that's what it looks like. <laughs> Time for the small spikes. Okay, just outline that. Five. I'm sure these will all fit. It's 
Stick. Stick. 36. That's the last little spike. Oh my goodness. Looks so good. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's not get too excited. We do have to hand paint all of the foam, so that's gonna be a bit of an ordeal. Uh, we'll start with our Mod Podge going in there and getting a nice, nice uh, stippled texture on all the exposed foam. That's next. But for a moment, I'm just gonna revel in this thing. It's so light, I feel like... <laughs> okay, back to work. gotten to the point where this thing is big enough it needs its own stand. There we go. I've got two layers of Mod Podge on there stippled on to get a really fun texture. The handle however dried days ago so I'm going to start brushing on some paints to the uh, wooden parts. These, these three parts here. Oh, let's just get rid of that thing. Oh it's stuck to me. Just making a little dark brown here for the, uh, the, bot, the, the base coat of paint for my wood is gonna be really, really dark. All right, we're just going for coverage here. And it's okay if I get some brown up here because this is all gonna get painted metallic later. So I'm, I'm not being careful or anything. I'm just trying to get a good base coat of dark brown down. Got another batch of brown mixed up here, a little more orangey red. The, the reference looks kinda, kinda, maybe like a cedar, I don't know. I'm not totally covering everything. I am putting a lot of paint on. This isn't dry brushing, but I am letting some spots keep that dark color sneaking through. Mixing up the highlights. And this will be dry brushed, so I'm gonna wipe most of it off. That's what we'll use. I'm just kissing the surface along these, the, the edges where they get a little more wear and tear. And I'm, I may Scuff the surface a bit. Just a hint of color. Just a little bit. That texture is doing work for me. I love it. Up next is the metal portions. I'm um, starting with black. I want to do a dark base coat for my metal. Uh, and I'm just going to add a little silver to make it more metallic. This is again our first layer. We're going to do a couple layers to get our, uh, our gold looking, our gold, our metal looking really good. Yeah. Oh, this is awesome. That texture is working for me. Time to add the highlights here. I've got my silver paint and I am just putting like the faintest whiff of paint on there and then I am brushing almost all of it off. This is actual dry brushing. We are putting on extremely light layers of paint and just letting the texture, all that texture we put on there, grab a little bit of paint at a time to add those highlights. We can scuff a little bit on there. And we can keep coming back and adding more if we think it needs it. Uh, but I'm definitely keeping these low spots here nice and dark, not putting any more shiny paint on there. I love how this is turning out. I just love it. Uh, the very last thing I want to do, I just want to mute the color on the wood a tiny bit. We'll do some weathering. I have brown and black paint, a little water. We're just gonna, we're just gonna do a wash. Oh yeah, cover everything. And we're just doing the wood. All right, let's just wipe that down. There we go, we have some dirt down in the cracks. Uh, and the colors are a little bit less saturated, and that's what I'm looking for compared to there. Let's do that on the rest of the wood. Oh yeah, the whole thing is covered. Let's clean it off. Yeah. Again, that texture is just doing all the work for us. I love it. I think this will do it. I think this is all done. <laughs> I mean, I should let this dry, but yeah, it's all it is so magnificent. It's everything I wanted it to be. It's possible the spikes are a little too big. 
but it's also possible that I don't care because it's so good. I can wave it around like a crazy person because it weighs almost nothing. This, this was a lot of fun. Oh, almost as fun as destroying all those death mosquitoes that I needed to make it. So satisfying. I really, really don't like those bugs. <laughs> Hey, thank you so much for hanging out with us during this build. I hope you learned a little bit about foam smithing. Of course, if you want to get into the craft, we have three, three books available over at punishpops.com, both print and digital. And oh, of course, I really need to thank the members of our Extra Credit Club. You guys are amazing, wonderful human beings. They keep the lights on around here. They keep Punish Props running with their support. Thank you so much. Links down below where you can join Thank you, extra credit members. And one more thing, we got a big change coming around here. If you notice, a bit more of an echo in the shop because all the stuff's gone. That's right, we're moving. We're moving the shop. We've been here for three years. The lease is up, so we're getting out of here. And uh, the next video will be from a different location. So look forward to that. Again, if you want to get some insight into the moving, we've been putting up weekly videos over on Patreon and our YouTube memberships. That's right, our extra credit members are getting all the details on the move. So if you wanna check that out, please join. We'd really appreciate it. All right, everybody, we've got some more stuff to move. Thanks again for hanging out with us and we'll see you in the next build. <laughs>